شكرا جميعا لتلبية الحضور للاجتماع الثاني لمجموعة هايبر ليدجر فابريك ليبيا زي ما قلنا البيربس اوف الجروب هذه از تو انتروديوس هايبر ليدجر ايكو سيستم ديفرنت سيستمز اكزيست ان ذيس ايكو سيستم اند انكلودينغ ذيم هايبر ليدجر فابريك اليوم معنا مهندس خالد فيتوري والسيد هشام بن بلا من اي بي ام Uh, they will introduce us uh, to uh, Hyperledger Fabric Architecture as well as they will introduce uh, what IBM can offer in terms of the IBM blockchain platform and how we can utilize it to build a Hyperledger uh, Fabric Network. Um, quickly, uh, just to recap on the last meeting, to provide some quick background Uh, of what's uh, Hyperledger uh, blockchain. And your presentation is five to 10 minutes, uh, just to recap, to we'll introduce uh, what's uh, blockchain for everyone. Uh, and then we will hand it to uh, Khalid and Hisham. Uh, we'll give a quick introduction uh, uh, لخالد وهشام سو مستر خالد الفيتوري تيريتوري سيل مانجر اوف اي بي ام نورث افريكا نورث افريكا هي جويند اي بي ام ان 2019 از سيلز مانجر ريسبونسبل فور توتال كلاينت ريليشن شيب ان ليبيا تيريتوري هي از ديفلوبينج انتجريتد سوليوشنز تو ادريس كلاينتس بزنس نيدز بوث اندستري اند بزنس and deliver client value with supporting IBM business strategies. Uh, prior to joining IBM, uh, Khald was at Cisco for more than 10 years, where he served multiple sales uh, rules in the Libyan market, covering various industries, uh, commercial, enterprise, public sector, and telecom. Uh, Khald started his career in oil and gas industry at Schlumberger. He served multiple uh, uh, roles as technical engineer and then moved to client management and sales roles. Uh, and uh, Mr. Fituri holds a bachelor degree in computer electrical engineering from University of uh, Tripoli. Uh, Hisham is also joining us uh, today from IBM uh, uh, Morocco. He's the client technical leader in IBM North Africa. He's a client technical leader for the banking industry at IBM. Uh, in, the, his, uh, in his role, he guarantees technic the technical structure, the architecture of the IBM solutions, including hardware, software, and services. Uh, Mr. Bimbella joined IBM in 2014 as a solution manager for IBM business analytics platforms. He led number of solutions, uh, deploying number of solutions for international clients in Europe, North America, and the Middle East covering uh, various industries, uh, telecom, financial sector, and public sector. Uh, prior to joining IBM, uh, Mr. Bimbella was at uh, NGAHR, uh, an HR outsourcing and uh, publishing company, where he served multiple roles as a consultant, IT architect, pre-sales consultant, and project manager. Mr. Bimbella holds a bachelor degree in computer science and MBA from al Kaywan University in Morocco. Uh, so we'll start quickly, as I said, with uh, a quick introduction uh, for uh, 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 blockchain. Uh, I'll share my screen and we will go through. Uh, hopefully everyone is, is able to see the screen, right? Yes. <clears throat> So uh, blockchain is one of these revolutionary technologies that uh, appeared like in the last uh, few years. Um, when I was trying to find out the best picture to, to start with, I couldn't find a better picture than this one, which describes the technology as the, how it's constructing uh, different uh, 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 chains of blocks together and it's building trust. It's a technology that builds trust between the different participants of the network. So what's a blockchain? It's actually uh, a database, uh, but it's a distributed uh, shared ledger. Uh, the way how it's uh, constructed is that transactions are received from different clients uh, or users, 
and those transactions are getting uh, composed together into a single what they call it block. Uh, this block will construct of a number of transactions that will be linked to uh, other blocks and all of that is done from, through some cryptographic functions, specifically hashing. So each block is linked to the previous block and the next block is linked to the previous block to, to construct this chain that will ensure that data cannot be changed uh, as uh, uh, more transactions are added uh, to the ledger. Uh, as we said, it's a database, but there is definitely uh, uh, some major uh, differences. First thing is data integrity. So records that are added in blockchain cannot be altered, while in database, uh, the records can be deleted or altered. Uh, the audit trail, which is one of the uh, major, let's say, features that all actions are visible. You can trace it back to the uh, very first origin of when the transaction happened. Uh, but in database, um, only administrators can have this view on actions and even logs uh, can be altered or changed over time. So that's where trust is, is, uh, doesn't exist in database systems while it exists in blockchain. The only thing maybe with uh, blockchain, specif specifically one kind called public blockchain, is that uh, adding records can take uh, uh, some time, while in certain systems specifically uh, the one that we're talking about today, Hyperledger Fabric, it's, it's reduced to a few milliseconds. And the same in database, uh, records are added in a few milliseconds uh, to, uh, to the database. Uh, main elements of blockchain technology, um, public key cryptography and hashing function. So cryptography is a core uh, technology used in blockchain. Uh, public key crypto cryptography is used to build identities of the users and hashing functions, as we say, it is used to connect blocks to each other. Uh, the distributed ledger, which is a system of records that's distributed among uh, all the network participants. And then the consensus protocol, which is the, the, the mechanism through which this, these different participants will agree on adding records uh, to the ledger. And finally, smart contracts, which is the capability of programming blockchain to the different use cases or the different uh, uh, businesses, uh, business processes that we would like to uh, automate. Uh, so there are three types of uh, blockchain uh, in terms of how to be deployed, either public, which is uh, a kind of blockchain that's available to everyone. Everyone can join. The software is definitely open source and everyone can uh, create a node and join the, the network. So this is like the major uh, blockchain networks for cryptocurrency that we know of, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and others. Permissioned, which is a blockchain, a blockchain uh, type where a few organizations agree to uh, build a network. Let's say a uh, few banks would like to build a network, let's say for uh, a clearance system or something. So this is uh, can be a permissioned uh, network where only uh, participants that are known can join the network. Or a private, which is, can be uh, a type of blockchain that's available within an intranet, within a single enterprise, let's say an HR system, may, uh, uh, for example. Uh, the main features of blockchain is that it's immutability. So as I said, records cannot be changed. And provenance, which means that we can trace records to, the, to, the, to their origin. So because we cannot change their, uh, any of these and there is an audit trail, so we can go back to uh, uh, time zero. Uh, al also, transactions can be anonymous, um, and uh, most of these transac transactions are cryptographically, se uh, cryptographically secured uh, with uh, transparency specifically in public blockchain. All of these features enable uh, uh, a model of trust that can enable different participants to uh, streamline different business operations that in the current systems would require more auditing, uh, more uh, reconciliation, etc. So the best maybe analogy to bring uh, blockchain to people coming from maybe IT and telecom background is that there is parallel between what's blockchain and TCBIB. Both are revolutionary in terms of how they will transform the, uh, uh, the internet. So TCBIB brought us to what they call it Web2, and blockchain will bring us to what, what's known as Web3. 
So uh, TCPIP enables low-cost connections. Uh, blockchain also will enable low-cost uh, financial transactions and payments. Uh, TCPIP enables bilateral messaging, um, such as emails, for example. Blockchain will enable bilateral uh, financial transactions. And the, what's the main thing here is that while TCPIP uh, enables the exchange of information freely and more openly, uh, blockchain will enable the exchange of value more freely and more uh, openly. Uh, anyone who plans to consider uh, blockchain, there is it's 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 a bit of a journey. Uh, so there is careful assessment. So we first, need to identify the suitable use cases, uh, decide on which platform to build on and what type of blockchain uh, we use. And there are many hurdles like uh, scalability, how to scale the system. Uh, but as, was, as I said, certain platforms uh, can reach thousands of transactions per second, such as Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, privacy, uh, which to ensure that even though there is transparency, but uh, certain data of the users need to be uh, kept private. And uh, in, in these sessions where we're introducing Hyperledger Fabric, we will look at some mechanisms where privacy can be uh, uh, achieved. Um, need to look at the workforce that uh, need to be educated and uh, brought up to the level uh, of how to deploy uh, blockchain uh, solutions and at the end the governance especially in uh, permissioned uh, blockchain networks where different participants need to agree on who has the uh, certain rules in the uh, blockchain network so anyone would like to consider start learning about blockchain two things infrastructure which is Today we are talking about Hyperledger Fabric, so that's part of it. And then smart contracts, which how to uh, code the business rules into uh, uh, a smart contract deployed on a blockchain to automate certain uh, business processes. Uh, different use cases exist uh, for um, uh, blockchain, um, but they can be classified in three, uh, three domains, either uh, uh, documenting records and data or having uh, a way to build a, an audit trail for these documents and data or to have smart contracts which will automate business rules or for exchange of value and this can be addressed in different uh, sectors maybe uh, financial services is the one that that's that has uh, witnessed early adoption and more uh, applications on on these three different domains but that can also go into real estate where we record where we, where we can enable uh, having uh, all these real estate records or land registry uh, for example uh, uh, on on blockchain uh, in telecom as well where smart contracts can enable uh, automating many business processes such as let's say roaming agreements um, in, in government, uh, digital identity is also one of those, uh, of those examples. And even in renewable energy, where people can trade uh, the uh, generated energy among the different participants. So just quickly going through some examples, let's say central bank digital currency, which is a hot topic uh, nowadays, where the central bank will issue uh, digital currency and the commercial banks will start to enable users to maintain their own wallets for this digital uh, uh, digital currency in addition to having maybe some anti-money laundering authority or verification of users etc one example where uh, one of hyperledger platforms called hyperledger aroha were, was used in the uh, cambodia and they were built they built uh, a, a trial for a central bank digital currency and having uh, a considerable uh, performance uh, uh, with all around 1,000 transactions per second. Uh, also in financial markets where banks, uh, regulators, uh, uh, or stock market, let's say, authority and uh, brokers can also participate in one network to enable trading of uh, different uh, uh, financial instruments such as uh, over-the-counter derivatives or bonds or uh, credits, etc. cetera. Uh, digital identity also one big example. Uh, Government of Canada with IBM, uh, they built some uh, trials 
uh, where users will store their digital identity in a digital wallet and through this identity they can get what they call it verifiable credentials to either uh, prove that they are an employee at a certain uh, place or they own a specific digital ID and uh, also to um, enable them to perform any transactions with financial institutions. Uh, voting as well uh, can blockchain recently one uh, company is targeting to record the uh, some of the uh, voting results of uh, the US elections on blockchain uh, just recording this but it can also uh, include the overall process from starting uh, to issue the users um, uh, certain IDs uh, for verification uh, going through uh, submitting their votes in an encrypted way and then uh, casting the um, these votes and uh, checking on at, at the end of the reports uh, as the uh, voting process uh, continues all of this in uh, providing some anonymity as well as uh, some trust between all the different participants to ensure that uh, the voting process is is uh, legitimate and fair uh, we'll stop here and uh, I will uh, hand it over to uh, Khalid uh, to start introducing uh, IBM uh, Hyperledger Fabric and IBM Solution. Uh, thank you, Ahmed. Yeah, you uh, didn't mention the uh, chain supply. Supply chain, yeah. Supply chain is also uh, one, one aspect, but to be honest, if, you, if we're gonna go through the use cases, there is, as I said, a long list, but I just highlighted some of them, but uh, supply chain uh, is definitely one of them. Okay, thank you, Ahmed, uh, for the starting up this by doing that. Uh, I don't wanna do much talk. I will leave it to Hisham to take you through the slides and do the detailed uh, talk about the blockchain and IBM platform for blockchain as he's the expert on that i'll just uh, say a few words i mean myself two years ago when i was uh, when i hear uh, blockchain term the first thing came to my mind is the cryptocurrency that was the only uh, uh, use case i i thought is for a blockchain but now i can see blockchain use cases are uh, uh, everywhere almost in each industry there is a blockchain use case uh, some are very visible some will come later but uh, this is where we are moving and this is the trend i see uh, i'll just uh, share my screen to show you something i mean for the people who are interested to learn more about what ibm is doing on the blockchain you can go to the website developer.ibm.com and here you will see uh, different technologies uh, uh, AI analytical and uh, blockchain is one of them so if you go to the blockchain you will learn a lot you will find the basic about the blockchain ABC and uh, moving on to the developer level and you will see a lot of uh, what IBM is doing in the blockchain domain you will find a lot of useful information, self-learning, materials, uh, use cases, and uh, several things. Uh, I invite you to visit uh, this place, and you will, believe me, you will benefit a lot of the information available there. I'll stop at that. I'll invite Hisham to take over and uh, go through the presentation and uh, I hope it will be very useful for you guys and you will learn a lot from it. Hisham, I hand this over to you, please. Uh, Thank you, Khalid. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, yeah, uh, so I'm very happy to be here. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's always good uh, to have uh, the, or to see, uh, as for me, as a, you know, um, aficionado of blockchain and other uh, uh, you know technology advancement that could change our lives um, and to see that you know uh, we are advancing uh, at the, you know in, in in the right direction and you know that the hyperledger chapter is uh, is is now created in in Libya and you know 
it's getting, uh, I'm sure, uh, a part of the, the Libyan future in, in, in IT and could, you know, um, have a real uh, impact on, uh, on, on, on Libyan uh, people and on the business as well. Uh, so yeah, so I'm 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 from Morocco. I'm uh, you know I'm IT architect. Uh, I'm client technical leader in in IBM. Um, I'm, I also do like uh, the uh, or, uh, I have the, the blockchain the blockchain subject in North Africa. I'm I'm leading it for uh, for IBM. So today's presentation, uh, I'm I, I rather uh, you know um, tr try to be uh, as uh, uh, you know, straightforward as possible. Do not, uh, I mean, do not hesitate to uh, to interrupt uh, if you have any question. We can we can solve it out right away, and then we'll we'll leave uh, we'll leave some time uh, to the questions by the by the end of the day. Um, so uh, it, it's uh, just if you, if I can have a confirmation that you are able to see my screen. Yes, you shall. Okay, great. Um, so um, to, to put for, to to put everyone in the um, you know in, in the right context, this is uh, the presentation that you're going to see is part of a you know a series of presentations that has been developed by IBM in order to uh, you know uh, to talk about blockchain, to explain blockchain, and uh, you know from either from the business side or the technical side. This is the technical series. And it has multiple chapters. We will mainly focus on the first one, which is the technical introduction and how to use the IBM blockchain platform. And, and you know, if, if there is interest, we can maybe schedule uh, another uh, call for the, uh, for the other, like the, the, how to model the blockchain application, what are the best practices uh, to, uh, you know, to have in, in head when, when you are designing and architecting a blockchain platform. Uh, so th that's, th that's about it. Um, uh, I, I completely, I, I'll try to, to skim through the parts that were, uh, you know, uh, explained to you by Ahmed, which is a uh, really interesting and uh, to the point uh, explanation of, of the blockchain technology. And, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll then uh, move forward with uh, the IBM blockchain platform, which, uh, as uh, Ahmed has said, is based on Hyperledger Fabric. Um, so we'll go uh, on an overview of the basics, uh, you know, of Hyperledger Fabric, then its concepts and components. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, as, as I've said, we'll, I'll, I'll try to, 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 for it to be, to, to be light. Uh, if there is any question, we'll go, we'll go further up. And, and then uh, go to the blockchain platform. Um, so yeah, uh, the, you know, as Ahmed has said, um, the, the, the blockchain solution, if we try to make the, I would say, uh, the parallel with uh, what we are used to on, on IT systems, uh, we have like data structures, we're, we're used to that, algorithms, we're, we're used to that. We invoke algorithms or functions. Um, we, we model peer-to-peer -to -peer network, or at least we, we, we work with this connection, open sockets uh, to different businesses, to different uh, you know interactions and uh, and integration and drivers, and then we we have we have partners. So this is you know assets would be the data structures, contracts are the algorithms, um, like what uh, what is needed in order to uh, to validate uh, a transaction, and and yeah, uh, so the transaction would be when we do invoke this algorithm or this function, and the uh, you know the business networks uh, are the you know. Uh, is the where the value is created, and um, and as and the participants are you know the different peers in in this uh, in this business network. So uh, I'd, I'd 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 like to uh, to start with the with this, this situational example about a consensus and you know a simple simple explanation of how does blockchain work. So um, we are here, we are like, uh, okay, we, we are either one of the audience. We, we have the audience, all those parts, all those blue dots. Then we have these mathematicians with the, the, the big dots with M's and, uh, the, uh, and the, the, the presenters. Let me just have a pen maybe here or a laser point pointer. And we, we have the presenter here. 
and uh, and the different uh, the different attendance of you know of all of us maybe virtually so this is a situation we have a problem a problem is asked what what is the square root of 2401 and uh, and we you know we asking everyone uh, uh, can you please agree on an answer so this this is how how it works that the presenter would be asking the, the mathematician to, to calculate the, the square roots of 2,401. And uh, every mathematician will, will write their answer on a piece of paper and sign it with their signature. And then the presenter would collect every mathematician's signed response. And then we will have to distribute the copies of the same answers to every member of, of the, uh, you know, to every member of the audience. So when uh, every, you know, every audience member agrees that the answer is, is the right one, there is a consensus. So th that's, th that's, that's, that's about it. So we'll just, okay, this is the participant that, 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 that we have. So uh, the, the, the problem, which, how, how much, mathematician should the presenter, uh, presenter ask so that the validation would not be costly to the, uh, you know, to, to, to the different uh, participants because at the end of the day there is, you know, we all know of it, there is a, a processing power that, that would uh, be consumed each time a consensus is, um, you know, is reached. And uh, how many mathematicians need to, to agree for an answer to be, to be correct? And uh, what if, if there is a disagreement? So th that's, how, that's the, the practical problem that, that, that would happen. And this is where we will put a policy that would uh, say, okay, this is how we do uh, agree on a good answer. This is, this is the conditions that would make a good answer for us and that, that will characterize it. So this is, you know, an example would be that, you know, we, we can agree that maybe all mathematicians must agree, or we can, uh, we can say, okay, this is only the majority, or maybe the two, the two thirds. This policy would be depending on the network and the business network that, that you will be uh, putting on, on a blockchain. And this is where the governance of a blockchain would be uh, you need paramount in order to have the, the right uh, policy uh, in, in front of us. And this is, at the end of the day, what, we, what will permit the, the, the transaction to be endorsed. So uh, a transaction would be, we can, we can be describing it as a change in the system, right? A transaction can, can not be only as, maybe as, uh, as Khalid has told you about the, um, the, the, the cryptocurrency that we say, okay, the transaction is A, uh, send in X number of whatever cryptocurrency to be. Um, a transaction is really a change, uh, you know, on an entry in a system, a change in, in a state. So uh, it could be like a change in, 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 in a bank balance, you know, um, that, you know, a student receives a diploma uh, or, or parcel is, is delivered. So as of now, as we're talking today, on a world without, without a blockchain, Every transaction is, is signed by a single organization. So if you are, um, you know, if you are issued a payment, then the bank would, would give you, you know, a statement um, that you have done this payment, but the bank would sign it uh, alone. See, first alone. And then maybe it, it will ask you afterwards to sign it as well. But you would not have signed on the very same time. So that, that's, that's what, what's different. Um, uh, when a... A, a university uh, gives you a diploma, it, it do sign it. But maybe it, it would have required uh, some other validation, maybe by the government or some other entity, or you know, um, a ministry, for example, that, that would, would sign this diploma as well. Um, so, so that's about the, um, the change in here, is to allow this multi-party transaction. So a transaction would not be valid unless it is signed by all the people that needs to be signed. And, and again, this is a policy that will be, um, you know, uh, designed uh, in, in the genesis of, uh, of this network. And as I said, like this is, 
this is the heart of how Hyperledger Fabric is, is working. So um, are, we, are we good there? Uh, can, is there any question or should we, should we go to the different concepts and, and components of Hyperledger Fabric? Uh, I think it's clear from my side. Yeah, if I may add uh, just one thing. Uh, the difference between the yes. Hyperledger uh, platform and the other uh, blockchain platforms is that they don't want to pay the miners and they want some of these transactions to be private with using the, the architecture of blockchain. Yes, absolutely. Uh, absolutely, uh, Hyperledger Fabric is not uh, based on, on the proof of work or the proof of stake. And there is no retribution, as we said, like to the miners or to the different peers that will be validating and endorsing the transactions. Um, so th th that's th that's the basis of it, and that's that's why uh, it, it, Hyperledger is, is, you know, the best uh, or the the most suited, I would say, to not to not uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, to not go into a polemic, I would say. Uh, but it, it is the most suited to, to a business uh, network because, uh, you know, the, the most, I would say, uh, basic reason is that no business network would uh, want, like, the, the, or would want to see the value of, uh, of them doing business, so making transactions with each other, linked to a, a, a currency that's, you know, that's fluctuating. So today, making a transaction is... I don't know, um, I, I'm just saying a number out there is $1, maybe today it will be 10, maybe the next day it will be five, then 15. And you know, uh, because the a business like to be, um, or uh, to, to, to see or to fo forecast their revenue and their costs, well, uh, that's not really a, a good idea for, for the mining to, to have, uh, uh, to have this, this cost that will be fluctuating. Correct. Yep. Um, so yeah. Uh, so l l let's go into the different the different concepts and components that are used with Hyperledger Fabric. So uh, in 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 this uh, you know in this slide, you you are we are seeing an organization. See, this is uh, a the, uh, uh, an organization uh, which is organization one. It has peers. It has ledgers. It's, uh, it has, I'll go to the channels after. It has an application, policies, smart contracts, certificates, authority, and ordering service. It, it, it has, and, and, and then you, you have all, the, the channel is what is um, uh, governing, uh, governing the peers. So uh, we, can, we can have peer in multiple channels, which means that we can have multiple blockchain, so to say, or multiple ledgers, uh, who, which are managed by the same pace, but which have information that are different. We might want our organization, if we are a bank, for instance, and we're making like business with other banks. Uh, but on the other hand, I am also a bank which has subsidiaries. And I want to be connected on a blockchain with other banks and the central bank, but also, I also want to be connected with, with our subsidiaries on a blockchain for another use case. So I wouldn't want to have like, uh, okay, those are, those are the pairs for the banks, those are the pairs for my subsidiaries. No, I will have my pairs and my pairs would be on different channels. So this is what the channel is about. And this, this is one of the, um, uh, you know, uh, a new functionalities that that have been uh, introduced by the, by, by the later versions of, of Hyperledger. And then at the end of the day, we have the order and service, which, uh, you know, for simplicity are the one which uh, would, um, you know, uh, broadcast the change once it is validated and once it is endorsed, validated, and all the steps we will say, we will see that afterwards. The order service will be the one which are broadcasting to all the participants, to all the pairs, to write a new entry onto their blockchain. So, uh, so this is a network. We're having multiple organizations, multiple pairs, uh, which are connected uh, using using one one or, or using the, the the same channel. 
and uh, yeah, uh, definitely uh, the organization can can own uh, any number of nodes. Uh, so that's that's really uh, as part of the architecture. You know, the overall architecture of the of the network will have some some peers that will say, okay, I want a node. I want to have a node in my data center, or I want to own a node that may, might be on the cloud, but that will be mine, and I will be managing uh, managing it. Um, or there is maybe an organization say, okay, I, I would need multiple nodes because uh, you know I need to be a, a major major part of the trust that's on on the network. So I, I want to have my weight, so to say, in in, in the overall trust. Um, or there, there is an organization say, okay, I'm I'm good. I can I can be a part of this you know of this network, but I don't need any any pairs. So I will have an application that will connect me to to the blockchain network, but I I don't want to have a pair which which is based with me. So really, there is no set rule. Um, uh, even the consensus it's not set with Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, there are the multiple consensus algorithms that we can be using. So it depends on the you know on really on how we're architecting it on the trust that exists, actual trust that exists today with the, uh, you know, with the, between the different uh, participants of this network. So that, that's where it is really important. So what we are seeing today is different paths that we can play with on, on our architecture. So uh, the, the policy uh, is, uh, is what is permitting this, uh, uh, the, the fact how, how we do validate a, um, you know how we do validate the transaction, so it, it serves like the the organization right or a constitution, or you know uh, it's really the basis, the genesis of of this of this network, and uh, it is set. Normally, uh, the, the use cases that I've seen is that usually it it will be set by a consortium of the different parts uh, of the network, the different uh, stakeholders of the network, they will get together and say, okay, this is how our policy should look like. This is how we, we will be uh, doing it. And uh, the, uh, the, any change in the policy, because it, it's possible, you know, that rules change, that something needs to be updated, so it's not written in stone, but the, 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 the uh, I would say the governing body of this blockchain network will will make the majority maybe of or, or, or organization agree on this change or maybe that all organization must agree on, on this change so uh, we will decide which work in this particular case in order to be able to change a, a, a policy and uh, so so once a it is you know uh, we, we do validate it. It needs to be validated. The change needs to be validated with, with the with your other other organization. So um, the, the the ledger, how do I put it? It is uh, it is really uh, comprised of two data structures. So there is the blockchain, as we know it. So as uh, with the the, the same um, uh, the same figure. That, uh, that Ahmed has been showing in, in his presentation. We'll have like a set of blocks which is linked to one another holding some information. And then we have word state, what we call in Hyperledger the, uh, the, the word state. Uh, the, the word state is a database. Like simply, plainly, a database. It could be uh, relational, it could be uh, noise QL. Uh, and uh, the, um, the objective of uh, of the uh, of this word state is to hold a um, uh, you know uh, a, a discrete or a, a really um, um, a descriptive state of the word as it is now. Let me maybe explain. In in the blockchain, as I've said, you have a set of blocks. I'll give an example. Um, if we go with the, you know, the, the, the use case, the most common use case, which is cryptocurrency, each one of us has a wallet. They have, you know, a number of cryptocurrency on their wallet and they will make, you know, transaction between one another. 
in the blockchain, what information would be, would be integrated in this blockchain? Is that A made to be uh, five, uh, five currencies, let's call, let, 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 let's, let's call them uh, E-coin. E um, five E-coin from A to B. B sent to C, three E-coin. D sent to A, five E-coin. So this is the information that you will have. Like the transaction, there will be no field onto the blockchain that will say A has X E-coin. It doesn't exist simply and plainly on the blockchain. They, if we need to, to see or to know what is the, uh, the you know, on the wallet, how much A, is, uh, A has of E-coins, we need to make the, 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 the sum of all the transactions that has been made in the blockchain, so all the different blocks in which A uh, do, uh, do appear, to see, okay, uh, in the, he did receive in the Genesis 50 E-coins, then he sent five, then he sent four, okay, he does have 43 E-coins uh, or, you know, 41 on this example, if I'm not mistaken. This is, this is his, uh, you know, his balance. This information would be present on the word state. This is what word state is about. It is having a descriptive information uh, and it is of the, uh, of the responsibility of the blockchain network of Hyperledger to make sure that the word state is in line with, uh, you know, with the information that has, that are on the blockchain. And if there is, you know, a, uh, you know, if there happens uh, to be a, a part where there is a discrepancy between the two, then the blockchain is the one that has the trust. The, the word state is used as a helper, as a way to, you know, increase the performance of the blockchain but in, in no way it can uh, supplement the information that are, that are on, you know, on, 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 the, uh, on the blockchain itself. So, uh, so this is about the blockchain and, and the word state. Uh, the smart contracts read and write from the word state. So the sort procedures, it, and it's in the, um, in the benefits of the performance. And um, the, uh, the application submits the transactions to the, you know, to, to, the, to the peer which will endorse and validate it and then put it on the blockchain, but also it will uh, update uh, the, the word state. So, Sorry, do you have a question? Uh, can yes. we say the word state is a type of centralized uh, database somehow? It, it's, not, it's not centralized in the sense that every pair has their word state. It's not centralized in any way. Okay. Thanks. Um, can I have a few questions um, really fast? Um, so, is it okay? Can I ask the question of... Yeah, please, please, please go on. <laughs> uh, I would like to go five slides back to the uh, introduction slide of the uh, components, I believe. Yes, this one. So I have uh, a question about the ordering service, which I, I, don't, I did not actually understand the purpose of the ordering service. And I have a problem in making the correlation between the policies and the smart contracts. So the policies, as far as the explanation goes in the following slides, is like the authenticator, the validator. Well, then, the, what is the, the purpose of the smart contracts since they define the operation itself? Um, now, the application as well is a little bit uh, strange because the application is it a simple uh, interpretation of the smart contract or a different use case using the same smart contract? Uh, that's the second question. Um, the last question is about the uh, database. Um, so, <clears throat> The database, is it updated on each transaction or is it synced or does every peer have its own policy on how to update the database? And is the operations or the submissions of the applications done based on the word state or the, basically the database or is it done based on the ledgers? So for example, in making a transaction, in order to make a transaction, moving some money from account A to account B, you have to validate that account A has a specific amount of money. Now, in order for the peer to make sure that that account has that amount of money. Does it go through the word state or does it go through the transactions? 
I believe since you said they reduced the timing and they have a pledge of a few milliseconds, then they have to use the database somehow to do this. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Maybe I'll, I'll go backwards in, in, in your questions. Um, indeed, you're absolutely right. The, the smart contracts, in order to see or to make sure that the balance is present before making a transaction, it will go to the world state and not through the blockchain because of performance in order to make sure that, you know, we don't, we don't have to calculate because, you know, me, on, on for, for Bitcoin, I, I, I think a couple or, uh, you know, a couple of years before uh, the whole, um, the whole ledger was about, about 20 or 20 gigabytes uh, for the wallet. So if we wanted to go and traverse the whole 20 gigabytes of text, uh, you yeah. know, even with the high CPU, then yeah, the, the, the performance would be really hindered. So to me, this is, so the word state is sort of like a derived attribute in a database. Uh, it still doesn't this present the, uh, the like doesn't this contradict the entire idea behind the blockchain? It's like you're using the derived attribute in a database, um, uh, or is there some sort of uh, policy, security policy that's enforced to make sure that databases are synchronized? Because the word states has to also match between different peers as well. Is that correct? Yeah, definitely, definitely, and and that's that's part also also of the endorse, uh, you know the endorsement policy that you know all the pairs would be would be running. So, see, for instance, if I have an information that you know my, my account having hundred uh, you know e coin, uh, and I need to endorse a uh, a transaction uh, because you know you would send your different pairs in order to endorse. What does it mean? Endorse it is that they will make the same transaction. And if I have an information which is erroneous, then there is a problem, right? Because every peer needs to have the exact same results. Uh -huh. uh -huh. so, so the information needs to be uh, the same across all the different peers. If a peer is, is moving out, then, then there, there, there are policies uh, at this point in order to manage the peer which is forking, which is going another way and understand why and, and maybe cut them from the network, uh, the, the time to understand what's happened. And then once they do come back, they do not come back with the word state, they come back on a new copy of the blockchain, the same as with the others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In case there is a discrepancy. In, the, uh, in case there is a discrepancy, right. So the, the so, system, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so th that's, I mean, all of this, I mean, it is, uh, it is what Hyperledger is doing, you know, in the, um, you know, uh, you know, behind the curtains is making sure, you know, as with the, their policies and how the algorithms work is to make sure that every pair has the, uh, the, ve the very same copy and the state is now different. Um, so that, that's the basis of, of how it's functioned. Mm -hmm. So, if I understand correctly, the answer to the question before this, I believe this also answers the questions about the difference between the policies and the smart contract. So, they replaced the brute force with policies, or they did not actually replace it, it's just a smarter way of validating the transactions of the smart contracts based on the policies. So, saying all yes. peers have to agree on the transaction, uh, and the transaction is defined by the smart contract. Is that a contract? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The, the smart, I mean, the, the the policies are you know the, the rules that we agree agree on on our channel or on our blockchain. The smart contracts are the enforcers of those rules. The applications is what then in this case. The application is is our uh, you know um, is how us as users have access to the blockchain. So the application is our application with you know. Uh, the the uh, it's there where we do call the the, the blockchains uh, different APIs and different calls. This is from where we are doing it. So from a um, you know how we do describe them uh, in in this um, in this figure. I understand. I'm really sorry about the questions. The last no, thing no, is that's the order. It, it is perfectly yeah. fine. You know that's what that's why. Uh, uh, th that's why we are here you know, in order to, to, to understand and, and I hope it's clear. As with the orderer, w w I'll, I'll give an example later in the presentation uh, on how a transaction is endorsed. Maybe it will help you, uh, it, it will help you have a clear understanding of what, what, what are the orderer. Uh, but those are like, uh, uh, I would say, uh, 
actors which are not part of an organization, which are not peers, but they, 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 they make sure of the synchronicity of all these transactions. If wow. I can put it. So before, I mean, after everything said and done, see like the transaction is good we endorse it we validate it and all you know the different steps that needs to happen then it is with the order they, they will send the the order to the different peers to write the transaction if they do not receive the order from like the, the peers do, do not receive this they will not write it even if they if they do endorse it i see i see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, that is very so much. I'm sorry again for the interruption. No, no, don't worry about it. Really, uh, my pleasure. Um, so uh, this is um, an example, in fact, of, of a, a ledger which is showing private and public state. So even you know, if everything is on the blockchain. And that's the basis of a permissioned, you know, uh, blockchain in which every entity or any party would only see what they are, uh, what they are able to see, uh, or they are, uh, um, they're entitled to see. In, in, in this case, we have an example like cause information uh, with, within a country, within a government, and uh, we have in different so, you know, uh, different views or, you know, so, so to say. Uh, information that, 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 that is public to all the organization, you know, all the, the cars. So we have in different makes, different models, uh, different years and so on. So this is, if, you know, information that, that is public to everyone. Um, and, and then the, the uh, information that is private to the, you know, to the Ministry of Transportation, for instance, and the police is the car owners. So every car, uh, and the uh, you know, and their owner. Then there is also information that is all that are private only to the police is you know a status or of of a car of an owner, for instance, you know that the car one is stolen or has been speeding where, in instance. Um, so, so and and then we have also the uh, the the uh, the choice to filter, so we can we can filter on a view and say, okay, um, I want to see all the cars that, that are the, the, the year before, 20, you know, uh, before 2000, the, the year 2000. Then, you know, all this information, this is how, what we get from the blockchain system. But then on the, on the blockchain itself, this is how the, what you will be able to see. Like uh, transaction one uh, by car one, transaction two, register car three. Uh, and this is on the same block. Then on the next block, we will have, you know, other kind of information which are written in there. So, um, so this is the the the, the, the structure of the uh, you know the, the the client the client application. The client application is, uh, you know, part of an organization. It has, a, and this is really important. It has a certificate, you know, because it needs to be authenticated before it is able to do anything on the blockchain. So it, it has a certificate based on, you know, uh, on, on cryptography, as I said, is, it is the base, the base of a uh, blockchain network. So it will connect um, to a gateway using an identity from a wallet. Then it will select an available network and smart contract, the one that, that it's, it can be connected to. And then they, they, will, uh, they will submit the transaction and check for the responses if it is validated or not. And then disconnects from uh, from the uh, the gateway. This is how we, as users, you know, as developers, as um, uh, other kind of uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, like the operators, the administrator, and so on. This is what we see. We only see the, the the application. So all the what we have been discussing on the like the consensus, uh, the interaction between the different peers with the world states and so on. It is uh, it is completely hidden. See. Uh, it is completely hidden from, from the application itself. We only make like one call, uh, validate or make this uh, transaction, and, and then we'll have the, the, uh, the response. Uh, so uh, the, uh, for, this is a, uh, an example of how the application is queried on, uh, on a ledger. Um, so uh, they, they will, Query their own organization pair. 
So, so the application for one bank, for instance, would go and query the APS. They would not go and query the APS from other, um, from other organization because the information here is the same as here and, and so on. This, uh, we should be, um, we, we have like made that, that, that statement already. And each one would, would be, as I've said, querying the, the, the ones. So, uh, so I, I'll give an example of how a transaction is submitted through the network. The first one, I like, we've made as of the contract, submit transaction, add call, call to, and it's make. It will go and, uh, you know, connect to the, you know, through the channel to the different, uh, to, the, the, to, to, the, to the pairs. Uh, in order to create a multi-party transaction, because for this example, we require org one and org two to be signing the uh, the transaction. So we'll have like uh, the what will happen behind the scene is that uh, the uh, we'll have the right car to um, order or uh, transaction which is signed by org one and write car2 signed by org2. And why is that? Is that we have a policy that say, for this case, org1 and org2 must sign. So we will have a, you know, uh, a response from the, the different peers to the application. And then what will happen is that the application would send a, a, a write car2 transaction, which is signed by org1 and org2 to the ordering services. This is, uh, you know, uh, at, this, at this moment that ordering service would send to all the different pairs the, uh, you know, the order to write the transaction in the ledger, which will be then, like we've said, uh, also uh, cascaded to, the, to their word states. So that we make sure that every like every pair is is being um, you know synchronized, and and you know then it, it is going to the word states as well that it, it, it is it is synchronized and we'll have the uh, the response to the application that the transaction is has been has been done and completed. Is, is there any, any, any questions so far? Uh, yeah, one of the issues that uh, you have always thought about hybrid ledger because of the lack of uh, proof of work, many think it's not as uh, transparent and secure uh, because there is no incentive, you know, for, uh, for anybody to verify, you know, or to, to keep the network uh, sound uh, and, and, uh, and safe. Uh, even though each organization is uh, controlled by governance and by rules and all that, but it's not the same. So it's the hyperledger uh, fabric, especially, took away a little bit from blockchain, but they're still using the blockchain principles, even though they are not really working with uh, with it, like the uh, consensus, like the uh, uh, proof of work, uh, the permissions, uh, uh, permissionless, and the uh, public. And they try to use the other software that's built on Linux uh, community to overcome of this. Are there any uh, uh, use cases uh, that that's we can uh, up to 2019? I think uh, everybody's saying there is a lack of uh, use case around the world to to uh, to participate in this uh, in this technology. No, I, I do. I can provide a number of use cases that that that's how today into onto production with this um, with this technology. Maybe uh, by the end of, of the presentation, if we have some time, we'll, I, I'll get to that uh, in order to present you like the uh, the major uh, use cases that, that that's how done worldwide. What we need to make sure. Uh, or I, I I understand and um, uh, you know uh, the, the the your position in which uh, proof of work would provide this. Uh, you know, as to make sure that um, uh, or what motivation will have a peer in order to participate in, in this network. 
um, I, I will reply to you that you know it is about trust, right? And we have a cost of trust. So um, in in the case of uh, you know cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin to not to not name it or other cryptocurrencies out there, there is a cost which is the uh, you know the uh, the, the the heat and uh, electricity consumption that would come into all those uh, different uh, nodes trying to uh, trying to to guess the the challenge before uh, you know and one one only one would be uh, would be getting it there is a cost on the one hand on the other hand uh, block yeah but that, no. but uh, but that's what but that's what enforces the trust and enforces the security this yeah, is what uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting to that. This is what makes. I mean, I'm I'm getting to that because we are talking on the case of, uh, you know, of transactions that are made amongst uh, people who are uh, completely anonymous, um, and we need to, uh, you know, it's it's not a small feat. I I'm hundred percent there to uh, you know to make two people's make transactions between one another that don't i mean we we don't even know what 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 is the first letter of their first name and we do make transactions business uh, you know we do send them money maybe in exchange of a service or a good or or, or whatever um so uh, and and it's done because of that but what what is hyperledger fabric is about is about permission networks business networks with uh, with people that do know each other that do identify with each other that have a reason to make this network working so th that's that's really the difference there yeah i think uh, hisham yeah Blockchain that's the special. Main difference yeah uh, <clears throat> in both cases we need to build trust but in case of like public blockchain as Hisham said, it's trust between people who doesn't know each other, who are spread all over the world. But in the case of uh, permission blockchains, such as in Hyperledger Fabric, uh, there is a level of trust that's already established because it's a, it's a network between, let's say, banks or in supply chain, it's between, let's say, different uh, companies that uh, exchange goods. So there is a level of trust there, but there is still a, uh, the need for blockchain in this case is to mainly to automate the business process and ensure that uh, data is recorded and cannot be changed or altered. Uh, even privacy in this case is, is more in the case of permissioned blockchain than in public blockchain. But uh, either one has its own applications and um, uh, definitely has its own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I think if I uh, may add something, it's, it's uh it's the world that is the the regulated ecosystem versus the unregulated ecosystem uh yeah yeah it's more about yeah which is one is that like more open to everyone to join the other one is a little bit restricted so it's usually as hisham said it's a consortium it's a business network so um you still users can still access this business network, but based on some rules that those organizations uh, define. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And the, uh, the objective here is, is, you know, different as making maybe a transaction with, with each other. It's maybe sometimes about, you know, in, in some use case, because it is slow uh, to make business with each other because if each one of us or each one of the business participants has their own way of uh, storing the data and i might have like okay this is how i store my data this is the data that, that is important to me and the other part uh, or the other party has uh, you know the, uh, the information is different or the, 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 how they are storing data and if the, we do not agree with each other it takes time in order to like uh, to, to get okay this is the data this is what i need this is how i need it and uh, to 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 reach an agreement if we had a blockchain network amount uh, you know between us we'll have the same uh, you know the same information which is shared and you know if there is disagreement just go back to the blockchain uh, you don't even need to talk to me so uh, this is how we how we base in it this this kind of um, of in, in information that we need uh, or of use cases that that's that's are 
um, useful on a, a you know on a business network as opposed to be able to make um, So that's where this cost of trust would be different. We'll say, okay, well, maybe we, we, we know each other. We don't need to go all the way to, to a proof, proof of work kind of implementation. Let's make it maybe uh, less, uh, less costly and, uh, and agree on a set of policies, which makes us happy uh, to, to make business on this network. I think you can move ahead, Tisha. I'm so. No, no, thank you. That, that's a very, very good question. I, I, I like that and always like to, to, debate, to, to debate about this. Obviously, there is no, uh, there is no right or wrong. Uh, th there is all only needs and, uh, and requirements. Uh, and based on that, we, we need to architect the, say, the, the, the best solution. I mean, even, even with Hyperledger, it, it is possible to implement proof of work, for instance, because you know, the, the consensus algorithm is, is not set in stone. We can change it based on the, uh, the network that we have in front of us and we need to architect for. Um, so, uh, so yeah, uh, that, that's, that, that's about the, uh, um, how, how, it is, uh, how it is possible. Uh, here, uh, maybe uh, if, uh, if I may, uh, I, I, was, uh, I was talking to you about the, the multiple networks and the multiple, uh, the multiple channels. Um, we can, uh, we, from, from, from our application, be able to connect to, to different channels. Let's, let's consider channels only for simplicity at this point, like different, different ledgers. So each one is, is a different ledger with different sets of information and different organizations can be part of, of, of that using the same, the same pairs. Uh, and here, what's, what's uh, important is that each one of the nodes, like each and every one of those needs to, to be identified. Uh, we, we do have uh, like, we can have like a certificate authority that's part of an organization that will provide the different, uh, you know, X509 certificate that will make them uh, identified. Or we can have a, a, you know, a third party one or an external one that's depending on, the, on how we want to do it. But uh, it, each one of those needs to be identified. And uh, without this, we can't, we can't work really. And uh, each, uh, you know, we need to be able to care for that certificate. So it, it, uh, be it on instance or on cloud and we have like uh, some uh, uh, you know uh, some tools like hsm high security modules or, or you know electronic vaults that would uh, take care of keeping those certificates uh, you know in security uh, in order to uh, you know to make sure that it's not it's not out of the, the wrong hands So to simplify, the wallet is the identity. That's not much than that. Uh, we it, it, it permits to uh, to identify the different uh, you know uh, a part or participants or user of a of a blockchain. And uh, it, from that identification, we we can define if it's an admin or a member or. Uh, and so on, an uh, operator, and so on, uh, as uh, as a, a user. And yeah, uh, basically, applications can use multiple wallets uh, uh, because applications can be uh, connected to the different channels. And yeah, I mean, this is this, this is really I mean, uh, the, the, our ability to have like multiple connection option, multiple you know, in, in a gateway, uh, be, be able to, um, to connect to different, uh, you know, uh, for, for have availability to different nodes. Uh, this is a, a really simple client application example that will permit to make a, uh, a transaction. I just, uh, this, is, this is really uh, straightforward, uh, I think 10, 15 line, lines of code. Uh, that's not, uh, you know, that's what you will need to do in order to, uh, to work and make a, a, the, your first transaction, your first hello world transaction on a, uh, a blockchain as well. Uh, a, smart, uh, a smart contract, it, it is, uh, you know, um, 
uh, as I've said, this is an uh, example of uh, of a smart contract. So it will uh, it, it will get you know what 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 sort of information get different uh, the different inputs uh, like the, the the context, issuer, value, date, and face value in here, and you know uh, interact interact with the ledger in order to make sure that all the conditions are met before a you know an, a transaction is uh, is validated. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe before go, going on to the IBM blockchain platform to IBP, is, is there is there any any question? I can move on, Michelle. Okay, okay, great. So um, so yeah, uh, basically I, IBM's blockchain strategy is based on you know IBM blockchain platform uh, in 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 the sense that. Um, this is the the main uh, the main solution that IBM is using uh, for implementing blockchain use cases with uh, clients, and also offering as a service uh, on 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 the cloud on IBM Cloud, but also as a um, uh, how do I put it uh, as an on-prem uh, kind of solution that you can install uh, on a node, uh, you know, on your own data centers. Which is one maybe of, of the uh, you know uh, one of the uh, good uh, choices that, that you're having in, in, in this case. So basically, I mean, blockchain platform is based on Hyperledger. It's not only Hyperledger in the sense that it permits new or it fa facilitates uh, some uh, some functions with Hyperledger that that would need maybe an administrator an operator to to do it. So it will permit or facilitate out of the box. So from this, uh, the, the IBM blockchain platform solutions are, are, are built on that uh, solution. If you are um, if you if you are familiar with, with that, and maybe we'll get to that later, is IBM Full Trust, um, which is the, uh, the the supply chain or the uh, use case for uh, uh, for provenance, so provenance of a of goods, uh, you know, uh, edible goods. Uh, from the farmer to the supermarket, so to to see the all the uh, the, the trace uh, of of that uh, of that food, then you also have the uh, the Maersk uh, uh, the trade lens the the the, the Maersk use case. So for supply chain, like you said, a really good really good use case for blockchain. And then you have IBM World Wire, which is a um, you know a, a way of uh, you know sending sending uh, money uh, overseas or of trans borders without using swift uh, and and so so that that's one of the solutions that ibm did uh, you know did develop and uh, they, um, they 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 would uh, they, that would also uh, mean that it, it it is proposed to their clients so if you are a port a custom agency um, you can be part of the thread lens of the Maersk supply chain uh, solution just you know by being uh, subscribed to it, to it and uh, and and so on so on top of that you have the ecosystem and you know across of each and every one of those different components you have IBM services with expertise and you know teams that will uh, make uh, or help from the ideation to the to the production uh, probably um, Hisham would like to add this new service that I read about uh, from IBM, which is the IBM Digital Health Pass, which is related to COVID-19 and how to restart the economy. So building digital identities on blockchain and uh, allowing people to submit verification of their COVID-19 test or uh, uh, other uh, verifications required. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, really. I mean, the the I would say even even further. I mean, the digital identity use case is a is very important or uh, very useful in you know in in, in the case of the blockchain uh, because of you know the trust that we have on the system, but also about the uh, our control of the data that is possible. So, for instance, if I have a digital identity on a blockchain. This is my, you know, my national ID number, um, 
and it, it will have my information. And I will be able to control who is able to see it uh, on a punctual matter. It also could have my, you know, my medical records in there. If I need to share it with the doctor or hospital, I will share it with them for them in order to be able to see. I, I can also revoke the access to that information. Another type of example is that, uh, you know, the KYC with, the, you know, the banks, the telcos, uh, because they need to be able to identify the, 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 the customers so that I can point them to my digital identity on the blockchain. No need for me to provide any other proofs uh, or, or whatever. And at the maybe end of the spectrum, uh, see, for, for instance, uh, in, you know, in, in, in Morocco, and we have to uh, make requests for visas um, for Europe, for US, whatever. And uh, we need to provide a whole like, set of papers uh, in order to be, uh, you know, to, to be approved for that. And if I had my digital identity on the blockchain, I'll you know, point them to that. <laughs> Uh, and and they be able to to see uh, approve or disapprove whatever, but they, I would not need to to make all the, this process each and every time with the same papers. Notwithstanding the ecological factor of those kind of uh, use cases. So, um, IBM blockchain platform. Uh, it is based on Kubernetes because Hyperledger Fabric do run on, on Kubernetes, um, and it is it is it can be uh, you know deployed on IBM, IBM Cloud, IBM Kubernetes Service, or OpenShift. Uh, it can be on prem, on uh, you know, and other clouds like uh, AWS, Azure, or, or Google Clouds. So what it does, in fact, give you on top of Hyperledger Fabric is those developer tools and the operator tools. So the developer tools is for uh, you know, advanced tooling, like create management contracts, applications, and network. Um, and the, 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 this choice to deploy anywhere uh, with uh, you know, uh, you know, only, uh, with only uh, clicks in order to deploy on the, on the different uh, clouds. So it is important to to uh, to make the like there is only one like blockchain platform. There is no uh, like uh, IBM Cloud version, on-prem version, different clouds version. It is the very and same one. Everything is 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 the same uh, because uh, that, that's where IBM is coming from. The hybrid cloud. Uh, we don't want to have different flavors, so it's it's the same, so that it's the very same experience for each and every one of uh, you know the different um, nodes. And also because you know uh, it needs to be interoperable uh, from a different uh, standpoint. So uh, how to get started? Maybe I'll, I'll, you know I'll, I'll get I'll get to that. You know on IBM blockchain platform, it is uh, you know you can there is a um, an add-on to the uh, VS Code uh, Virtual Studio Code, which is you know open source. It can be developed. And uh, you know it works on Linux, Windows, and, and, and Mac OS. And there is an IBM blockchain platform add-on on there, which will permit you uh, to uh, begin create your smart contracts, create your own uh, your connection to, to, to your network, your new network, uh, etc. Uh, and here you can see the IBM the IBP admin console. This is how it looks like. See, you see that you know uh, you have your nodes, your pairs based maybe in this case it's on IBM cloud so in it's based on different regions uh, with one organization so pairs certificates authorities orders and so on so this is you can see like a high level view of every one of those um, it, you know you can uh, configure your infrastructure you can connect and manage the different components the policy and identity management is here and even like the smart contracts management can be here it can be installed it's associated and so on and uh, lastly, it's, it, it is installed on IBM Cloud on a Kubernetes uh, cluster, or uh, this is uh, not, uh, uh, not visible on this slide yet, but it, it is also on OpenShift. They're working like on OpenShift uh, cluster on IBM Cloud. So uh, in uh, like, 
each of the components of hyperledger fabric do run on a single uh, uh, pod or a single uh, container. So, uh, you know, it, you have, have in order here, it is a container, and in init node, it is a container. The chain code, uh, you know, uh, it is con the couch GB is a container, a peer is a container, and so on. So each one of, all, of them is a separate, uh, a, a separate container. Uh, to allow for, you know, I, I'm not, I will not give you the uh, advantages of microservices here, but, you know, it will, it will allow the scalability and uh, of, of the, the, the uh, you know, the, the network. And uh, the storage would be, you know, like on persistent storage uh, and, and, and file storage if it's a most SQL DB, for instance. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the end of, uh, you know, of this first part of the presentation. What I have uh, also uh, is, uh, it's, it's not a demo, but it's also a slide, but it will show you from uh, the VS code point of view, how to do create, uh, you know, smart contract, how to, to instantiate. shit. If we want, we can go through that, but I'm not sure, Ahmed, in, in the interest of time, how much time would, would we uh, still uh, have? Um, I think if everyone agrees, I think it's going to be important to show uh, this. Is it like a video? No, it's it's not. It's not. It's not a, a video. Let me uh, let me go through that. <coughs> I mean, if we can take like let's say five minutes just to show this, okay. because it might be yeah. important to some of the people who are attending today. Okay, can you can you can you see my screen here? Yes, yeah. Okay. So as I was saying, uh, it's it's only it goes onto more details that we are discussing about the IBM blockchain platform. It is you know you having the the, the VS code. It is it is key in fact into the developing with IBM blockchain platform. And you know, as I've said, it is open source. You can you can download it on your own machine, download the add-on, and and be able and you go. Then you have in the um, the IBM blockchain platform console as we've seen it, and it's running on a Kubernetes dashboard. So you will be able to see or to uh, to operate uh, your cluster, uh, the deployments, the different pods, and and the replicas, and so on. So this is. This is what you need to do in order to manage a, a blockchain, uh, uh, you know, the, the IBP. Um, it is also important to note that, you know, it will be the same on, uh, you know, on, on the different clouds, on the different, uh, or even on-prem, you will have the same tools that, that will make you able to, to manage it. We'll go uh, onto the, the, the VS code. Um, you know, it, it, this, is, this is its, uh, um, the, its UI. Uh, in, in the sidebar, you can be able to, to install uh, extensions and you know, you, you'll have the different uh, JavaScript uh, or Go or Java, or whatever uh, you are using to, to develop onto here uh, as with a you know, regular IDE. Um, so uh, you, can, you can install, like you go to the, uh, to the extensions and install IBM Blockchain Platform, it's right there. It, it has some, uh, you know, requirements or components like npm that needs to be installed. Uh, not just, you could have like it needs Xcode, Go, or not JS. It will install install it for you, uh, just for you to, to be able to have IBP, and then you will be able to start. Um, you will have the this is this is the icon of the uh, IBM uh, of the IBM blockchain platform, right? Um, so I'm just try to have a pointer. This, this is the, the icon of uh, IBM blockchain platform. You'll be able to, uh, to view like, the smart contracts, the, the fabric uh, elements, like the gateway, the channels, and so on, the environments and the wallets in here. Um, and, and also, you'll be able like, to, to get directly on some tutorials 
uh, you you will have the you know the ability to uh, to do so uh, and uh, in in this in this um, in this window you will have the, the logs uh, so the outputs uh, so here here you connect in submitted transaction and so on so the logs are the, the actions that you are doing uh, so this is how you know when you are on the explorer view you will have the different uh, the different uh, the different files that the, the, those are the paper paper contract those are smart contracts those are js and you are we are in sessions in here uh, in 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 here So this is how we test the the, the smart contract. We'll, we'll right click a smart contract to to export in it, and uh, and we will reveal the, the package open project in order to and then we'll start the uh, you know the, the the local instance in order to install and instantiate the, the smart contract, and um, and we'll be uh, afterwards uh, connecting to the gateway. So this is the gateway to the as we said the application will be connected to the gateway in order to get to the uh, to the channel um, and uh, and here you will have in a wallet so this is where i our identity is sold um, and we are right clicking into uh, in order to submit a transaction uh, yeah this is the fabric SDK, sdk this is where, where we are um, we are putting i mean all, all of those are you know in in the tutorials you you will, you will see a uh, line of codes which are already done then this is where we do require the the fabric network or the fabric sdk that we are uh, that we are using on our application so this is a, a node.js application that we are using so here uh, this is the web console this is the IBM blockchain platform uh, web console uh, again you will have you, you can have access to tutorials in here which are really nicely done and you know uh, kind of hello world tutorials or also some some uh, pretty advanced ones in order you know on specific use cases and um, and the, here you can select the different like th those are the nodes this is the channels this is the smart contract this is the wallet organization the users and the settings of uh, of the, the the platform and here this is where we create peer certificate authority as you can see like it is pretty much uh, well, self-explanatory in order to, uh, to to do so. In, in on the pair, you can see the in the green square, you can see the health of a node. So you know, green it is running. It can be uh, yellow. It can you know to get your attention or red as not running. And you know the ID of the organization and where it is deployed. So this is where we do create an import additional uh, additional node. And those are the kind of details that we were having on the node. So, for instance, you will have in the location the the version of the Hyperledger fabric that is used, but also the the state database. Here, it is based on CouchDB. So, yeah, making sure that we like the identity is registered. I mean, managed and registered really critical. We can. Uh, have a self-issued certificate for test purposes, for development purposes, for like you know really uh, initial type of uh, of developments. But afterwards, we need to 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 have uh, uh, you know to, to make sure that our certificates and private key that they are really uh, taken get good, good, very good care of. Uh, Hisham, probably we can yes. maybe. Uh stop here if if you have or if you have maybe if just more few more slides to show okay i get we it will, we will open up for questions probably yeah with pleasure with pleasure this is an example of the you know a, a, a target, uh, you know, a, a target network that it can be can be built. For instance, like with the different uh, uh, the, the, the different actors. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, Mr. Omran, I, know, I think I, he has a question. It seems on one of these slides. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I see it uh, uh, a good use for it in, in our system, especially for KYC, know your customer. Yeah, that would be a good a good uh, system to to do so. Where where else do you do you think uh, the, uh, the this technology can be used in Libya, based on the information you have about the infrastructure and the knowledge and the quality of programmers and all that or the lack of it. Where do you think uh, this could be a best practice uh, where we really need it? Mm, probably I'll go and uh, touch base on this question first and then if Hisham or Khaled maybe also would like to add. But I think um, globally financial markets or finance, the finance industry is the one that's more adopting these technologies and definitely Central bank digital currency is, is one hot topic and really probably important in Libya as well, given the situation that we are in. Um, uh, stock market exchange, or this is also another use case. But even in, in case of land registry, we know the situation also Libyan land registry. And uh, this is a, a, a very appealing use case, I think. Uh, some countries in Africa are really targeting the uh, use of hyperledger fabric for building land registry applications, uh, similar situation that we have. Um, other use cases, uh, education, like for verifiable credentials. Um, uh, the recent report <laughs> about uh, the classification of the Libyan education system was really shocking, but uh, but that's where probably some of these examples. Uh, in terms of talent, um, I would not say that there is lag, but probably there is requirement in the workforce inside each organization to bring it up to the level. But uh, um, I think it's there. There is good developers out there in the uh, private sector, at least for hyper ledger. Yeah, for the hyper ledger. For, yeah, yeah, for hyper ledger. Yeah, um, uh, I'm not really aware, but there is a few couple of projects that I know uh, people are developing. Uh, it's not like uh, in the industry, but in academia, uh, at least uh, three projects that I know of. Uh, graduate students are developing uh, applications in Hyperledger Fabric. Um, and we have here some, um, some developers uh, who are interested also to join and learn more. So I think it's it's the time to bring it up to the community and uh, get them engaged and uh, hear from uh, the public sector uh, on on what they see in this technology and how it can help. Uh, of course, uh, I'll leave it to Khaled maybe if he would like to add something. Oh, Ahmed, in Libya specifically, I see a lot of uh, use cases or where we can utilize uh, blockchain uh, to solve uh, some issues that we are facing. One of the examples that I have is a digital entity, how you can utilize it for national ID in Libya and the civil society. This is one of the, I think, something يعني, feasible that we can do it to avoid the uh, duplication of the world and the things that are going to happen, for example, the national ID or national ID is began shared between different entity in the country and يعني اساسي في كل شيء اصبح يعني yes but this is a good application to the blockchain uh, another one ممكن وزاره الماليه وحكايه الدوبليكيشن بتاع السالري والامور هي this is where we can utilize blockchain to avoid any duplication and make sure ان الناس يعني ياخذوا في السالري من جهه واحده ومن امور زي هذه يعني yeah uh, Another one is the voting. يعني إحنا خشين على voting ممكن يعني تكون فكرة يعني نسهل الموضوع voting يكون e voting ونستغل the blockchain to make sure إن transparency وإن ما فيش أي corruption في الموضوع وإن it happen quickly. يعني في several several application هي أهم حاجة the willing وإن في the governance من جهات عامة. To utilize this technology in such things, يعني in the country. فاحنا مع همة الناس اللي هم interested في المواضيع هذه ونشر the knowledge about the blockchain and the hyper ledger. Definitely, we can utilize it in several, several use cases in the country.
maybe uh, Hisham uh, wanna show us some use cases, yani, yeah. as we are talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, thank you, Khaled. In fact, uh, yeah, a number of, I mean, there is a number of use cases that can be benefit from blockchain. Uh, it, it is true uh, that you know there is a huge benefit into doing so, but also um, maybe on the other hand, I would say of the um, uh, of the spectrum is that not maybe not all solutions are uh, are possible for blockchain. Maybe in some cases, it can also be uh, beneficial to go with other solutions rather than blockchain. We uh, we've we've seen the hype happening, but now the solutions that stays are really the one that that do have some value in the technology uh, be, being used. Uh, I would say that, 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 that there is a, a rule, uh, a rule from from IBM, from our number of uh, of implementation that we have done, from successful to not, is that the, the, you need to have three T's, three dimensions: trust, transparency, and time. If a use case would benefit from any of those three dimensions, then blockchain can, can be the solution. If, if those are the three dimensions, even better. Uh, so uh, examples of those uh, industries uh, is like, like Khalid said, with the uh, citizen identity, as Ahmed said, medical records, um, the letter of credit. Uh, this is really, um, uh, you know, on, on the finance side, uh, the, the, the fact that we uh, it, it is taking a lot of time in order to, to do business uh, uh, transborder. Uh, it's also the uh, I would say a very simple use case, which is the audit the audit trail for finance, the finance audit trail. Um, so so that you, your book would be on a ledger. So uh, any uh, any audit would really really easy uh, be, uh, moving forward uh, with uh, the supply chain. The loyalty program, for instance, uh, loyalty program. I, I like this use case a lot because um, uh, you know, if you think about it, uh, there, there are a number of uh, suppliers out there that would offer points if you buy with them, and uh, you are able to redeem those points for some kinds of uh, you know goods or services or wh whatever by the end of the day. Uh, and uh, if you think about it, those points are somehow uh, cryptocurrencies or digital currencies. So, um, so yeah, this is really, uh, really, you know, uh, really easy uh, use case. Uh, and then, yeah, information sharing. Uh, you know, the, the, the fact that we are able to, um, you know, to share to uh, close disputes very easily because we have shared information about among us in a network as suppliers, supplier retailers, or you know, any kind of you know client uh, supplier uh, relationship. Um, and uh, and yeah, I mean, in the uh, in the insurance, the fact that we are able to see for a car or a, a you know a person the number of uh, or you know all the uh, history, all the provenance, we are able to see it on a blockchain, and we know that it's not something that has been tampered with, so we can trust it. On the manufacturing, it's the supply chain, uh, really really good use case because you know it, it takes it takes a lot of energy and effort. In making the goods arrive at the at the right place with a number of documents and so on and validation that needs to happen, and even in security because we are able to uh, to trust the uh, um, the provenance of the data uh, and the maintenance tracking, as for instance the airlines or other kind of industries in which we are able to see the provenance of uh, you know uh, of spare parts and so on. Um. I think we will have maybe 10 minutes. Uh, this Zoom meeting will be maybe used by someone else at uh, in like 15 minutes. So I'll give it to, I'll, I'll ask maybe Abdul Malik, he raised his hand for a question. Yes, Assalamu uh, Alaikum. I have sorry, I said to you, but three questions um, really fast. Uh, Few questions are about the business side of the or the business side of the applications of Hyper Ledger or the blockchains in general, and then some questions that are uh, technical. Uh, I'll start with the technical questions first. So regarding the multiple blockchains, so as far as the, as I understand, each blockchain is is, uh, is is built on its own. So I understood that different peers can have different types of data uh, stored. 
uh, within the same blockchain. However, I wanted to ask in case there was another, uh, for example, blockchain developed uh, that has a correlation to the first one. How uh, I know the question, I'm, I'm trying to find the best words to describe the question, but uh, I'm trying to ask if we can integrate two blockchains together using smart contracts or uh, policies, and how will that affect uh, the first blockchain and the second blockchain? So that's the first question. I'm not sure if you want me to ask one by one or just ask them all and then wait for the answer. Yeah, just go ahead, uh, Alderman. Uh -huh. So that's the first question. Now, the second question is uh, it's the modifications or the altercations on the policies and smart contracts. How, how easy is it to um, modify basically transactions, not the transaction uh, log, but the uh, policies themselves or the smart contracts themselves? And is that uh, feasible by the, uh, you know, the storage itself? So transactions are stored in a specific way in case I alter the smart contract or the policies, can the uh, can the change be cascaded throughout the uh, the different peers or the different uh, uh, peers in the network? That's the second question. Now, the third question is 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 a uh, is a business side of the application. Some some of the use cases that we talked about here are business or are governmental or business related for example when we talk about the central bank digital currency or the uh, digital identity some of these use cases are correlated in order to have one sometimes you have to ensure the integrity of the data that you're starting with you have to have the other the prerequisition aspect is uh, is important so for example to ensure that transactions are done correctly you cannot base them on the uh data that's available before the blockchain so you have to have the digital identity in a blockchain first and then move on to the uh to the second application which is for example the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the land registry so that's one uh, how is it that i'm not sure governments or or, uh, or uh, other people who have used this technology before how did they adapt to this so the prerequisitions, the requisition of different use cases. I'm not sure if the question is is, uh, is related correctly. Um, uh, I believe this this is it. Yes, uh, this is the, uh, the the third question is a little bit broad, but I, I try to formulate it the best way possible. Uh, you are 100% uh, on the prerequisite parts, and uh, you know, and this is maybe my, my personal opinion. I mean, the the thing that would make the the, the blockchain technology, uh, you know. Uh, uh, broadly adopted is two two kind of, of use cases. It's the digital identity, as we said, the fact that we are able to identify each and every one of us. So if it's you know if it's there, then yeah, it will it, 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 it is the first step. I would say the second step is uh, the, the the digital currency, so to say, because today, you know, uh, the the fact that the, all the business is is based on uh, you know uh, on uh, on goods and you know um, value being transferred from a person or through an organization to another it could uh, make like those kind of use cases rocket because we are will be able to identify and we will also be able to pay if we are able to do so then yeah uh, limit is the sky on, on those kind of use cases so basically on, on that on, on that kind of set now that being said it's not, uh, you know, it's not an end to means because we can make some use cases right now with, which uh, would require uh, the digital payment, but uh, would require maybe an alternative way of identifying people, which is okay at the moment. We are, you know, on uh, on developing this uh, this use cases uh, and moving forward because we have a number of uh, parties that needs to be involved. Like we we need the, like the government, we need the uh, the, the different actors uh, to to agree and move forward with these kinds of projects, which takes time. Uh, the second question, I mean, from last to first, uh, so I, I am on on a, on a FIFO uh, stack uh, today. Uh, <laughs> no, <it's... laughs> the, the 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 second the the second question about about the. Um, the, the policies and uh, if the, 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 there is a cascade, uh, you know. Uh, in fact, yeah, I mean, it's true. I mean, if we do change it, it will cascade to the others, but just make sure or we need to understand here that all the parties need to agree 
on, on a change to policy before it is uh, implemented. No one party can change the policy by itself. Yeah, the, so the, there, is the, yeah, there, is, for, there is recently in Fabric version 2.2, .2, there is a, a chain code lifecycle management introduced, which will allow how to upgrade chain codes, how to modify this endorsement policy, etc. So, um, so it's a blockchain separate for policy. Uh, like so the, there is, yeah, there is a chain code, uh, there is system chain codes installed that will manage, uh, will manage this. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. to, to make it easy for the administrator to, you know, to update the, the policies and itself. But from a governance point of view, or the governance standpoint, we need to have an agreement of the different parties uh, in order to, uh, to be able to change these policies. The mm -hmm. third uh, question about the interoperability of, of blockchains, it's uh, yes. this current uh, research, uh, you know, a research subject um, in order to make uh, like this intra blockchains, intra chains, interchains. Um, uh, connections and uh, if you think about it it's uh, you know it, it, if they are able to do so it, it then it will be like the internet as we're saying like we're sharing the data because you know it's like the lands uh, that we come up with the tcp ip in order to be able to connect them right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so it, it, it's good you know it, it could change things but from a node point of view so a node can be connected to multiple channels or multiple blockchains so to say multiple ledgers so uh, the, a node might have the need to connect to different and make a change in two no in two uh, channels in parallel this will be implemented into the uh, the code of the node or the application of the node will be making that but at the level of blockchain pure blockchain level they're still working on a way to, to, to integrate uh, like multiple blockchains. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, we, will we will stop here maybe today. Um, as I said, uh, unfortunately, the, the, the Zoom meeting link will be used by another group. And uh, it was really a pleasure to have you, Hisham and uh, Khaled, and also a pleasure to have everyone here today, uh, such an interesting uh, uh, discussion. And uh, uh, the plan to have a series of events that will cover Hyperledger Fabric and other uh, cloud uh, providers on what they offer. And uh, definitely we'll have sessions that are more dedicated towards like uh, smart contracts, chain code, and other platforms like Hyperledger Indie um, and SoTooth and other Hyperledger platforms. Shukran Jazeen al ونلتقى ان شاء الله في الـ في الايفنت القادم بعون الله السلام عليكم شكرا للجميع ماي بليجر ثانك يو باي باي شكرا الله يحييك بالتوفيق <تصفيق>